Hello and welcome to another episode of Shampoo and Booze. This is episode number 61, part two on our two-part series about laundry. We are Ryan and Ashley, sisters who both run Airbnbs and want to help you run yours. Every week we cover topics about the design and operation of short-term rentals. You can send your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com and we'll do our best to cover the topics you care about. We're also available to give design and listing advice for your own personal Airbnb situation. You can check out our services page at notperf.com to book a time with us. That's a good segue to like, how do you draw the line to decide when to replace something that's like dingy or worn or like, how do you make that decision? Uh, it's, it's a hard decision because number one for sheets, sheets are expensive. You know, it's really hard to be like, I got to get rid of this. And now I have to replace either the whole set or I have to get another fitted sheet and it's just one fitted sheet. And you know, yeah, it's really hard. But honestly, like you have to look at it and judge how bad is this? Like, I'll have little scuffs on things, but it's on the bottom side and you can't really see it. And I'm like, okay, I think this this one's going to be okay. It's down in the corner. Like, you can't see it. You you, you know, there's going to be a blanket over this forever. And as long as it doesn't have a hole in it, you're good. Um, it's just one of those things where you just have to look at it and be like, if I saw this at a rental that I was paying for, what would I think? That I feel like that's exactly the line. It's like, put yourself in the shoes of like, I paid how much a night for this? And what would it be like if I had spent that money at a hotel or a motel in the area or another Airbnb rental at this price? Like I always try and put myself in the shoes of what did I shell out for this? And right. what is the quality of my experience with this set of towels or with this washcloth. And if it's like not worth it, you know, if you have in your mind, okay, this is, this should be nicer, then that's probably, that's probably the line. Right. And the obvious thing too is like, if there's a hole in a towel, get rid of it. Towels get holy. Like, I don't know, they just get worn out in certain weird spots and like just a hole will appear and you're like, okay. Or they start to fray at the edges, right? I have like little stringy, yep. stringy towel things. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes with towels, like little strings will come loose and stuff. And I will trim those. I have a pair of scissors in my laundry room and I'll be like, okay, this is like a fine towel. There's a little like terry cloth string coming off. I'll just trim it. Definitely trim those. If you see those, those look junky if you are not trimming those. But if it's so bad that, like you said, like the edge is totally frayed, it's like the the cool thing about towels. If you're like an environmental nerd, number one, you can cut them up into rags and you use them around your house and clean stuff. And then they're a hundred percent cotton, so you can actually compost them. So I just like if a towel is so bad it can't even be used as like a drop cloth or anything. I'm like compost. Like it's turning into dirt for my garden. Yeah, like just, in a year, just let it go. Back to the order of washing things. So I had asked you before, you know, when you strip beds, particularly because you have so many bedrooms, because you have so many different kinds of beds and linens, um, how do you think about that order of washing things? Stripping things, washing them, organizing them. How do you think about doing that? How my cleaners do it, number one, when you strip a bed... What you want to do is you want to make sure that, like, when people sleep in beds, they deposit of, like, skin cells and hair and, like, stuff that was on their feet and, like, their dog jumped into bed and, like, there, there was dirt from the yard and grass and stuff like that, right? So when you're stripping the bed, you want to strip the bed, like, strip the, the uh, fitted sheet in a way that, like, keeps all that stuff in it. Now, I'm pretty sure my cleaners do that because when I get it, everything's in like a big ball in the fitted sheet, basically. So I'm hoping that is what they're doing. Because like we said, if you strip a bed by just like grabbing the sheet and not caring, all that stuff is going right onto your mattress. So 
and the floor and you know hopefully you're cleaning the floor after that but like you know you might as well just keep it all in there so that when you're washing that stuff's getting washed out so that's number one Number two, the way I do it is I pack the linens right now anyway for my cleaners by room. So I, I have these big zippable um, Ikea bags. They, they're they awesome. They have a big zipper on them and handles and stuff. And I do it by room. So I'm like, this is the duvet, the sheets, and the pillowcases for this room. And then they put the dirty ones back in that bag. So... Right now, I wash by room. I'm just like, this room, this room, this room, and then all the towels. And what I used to do was, I used to wash, I I send like microfiber cleaning rags with them, so they're not just like throwing away paper towels, like... I don't I, I don't know how other people do it, but I'm like the at hotels they're like, here are all your rags, and then we wash them. Like that's the that's the environmental way to do it, but also like you're not I don't know how else anyone would do it, but so I used to wash the rags with the towels because I was just like, this is one thing. But then I slowly realized that the rags are being used to clean like grease and uh, coffee and, you know, just the floor with like dirt and junk from outside on the floor. And it was making my my towels really dirty. <laughs> like, I don't know why it took me. So I was trying to be efficient where I'm like, this is one load. This is one load. This is one load. This is its own load. Instead of like, washing the rags by themselves because there's only like five rags but so what I started to do I just started to do this like a month ago they'll bring me the rags I dump them in a basket and they start to like dry which is fine and then I wait for like three more cleanings to happen because I have a ton of rags like I have a pile of them so it's not like I run out so I just pile them until there's like three or four cleanings worth and then I do a load of the rags so it's pretty important to keep those things separate. I even put the rags in a plastic bag and ask my cleaners to put the dirty rags in a plastic bag because they were staining like they would just throw them in with the sheets and like there were coffee grounds in the sh I'm just like, you guys, like I need this separated because it's it's ruining sheets and it's ruining towels and it's too expensive for that to happen. Right. And this is where those systems, it's like you sort of learn them as you go. Right. you know, for your particular situation. Right. I've never worked at a hotel. Like, I don't know how I've seen like TV shows about hotels and actually some of the things like the cleaning rags and stuff, like to actually use cleaning rags and give your cleaners rags. I learned that on, on shows and stuff, but to keep them separate, that took me, <laughs> it took me a couple of years to figure that one right. out. But yeah, so I basically wash by room. Um, but then, okay, so here's the here's the rub of that. I dry by type. So I don't like throw the whole room in the dryer because everything, it's too much for the dryer. Like you can stuff a washing machine full and it's fine because it's like the water's pushing stuff down and it's moving around. You can't do that with a dryer. Everything, like, especially with fitted sheets, everything will get bundled up in a fitted sheet and it won't dry. Right. It's just inefficient. Yeah. So I, I dry essentially by type. So when the room is done washing, I, I actually put a whole um, laundry basket aside and I start putting pillowcases in there. All the pillowcases from every load of wash go in there. And they get dried by themselves because pillowcases get stuck in duvet covers. They get stuck in fitted sheets. Like if you dry them with the towels, the towels get in the pillowcase. Like it's just, it's, you're just like, this is driving me crazy. And they dry in like 15 minutes. You're like low 15 minutes, go. They're, they're fine. They're tiny. So those are easy. And then I dry just the sheets by themselves. I dry Every duvet cover gets dried by itself. It takes 20 minutes. It's no big deal. And then towels get done by themselves, like on super heavy duty towel one. But it took me a long time to figure that out too. Like Jay and I would just be like, throw it all in the dryer and nothing would get dry. And we'd be like, this is taking hours because you just have to pull everything apart. So it's, it's a job. Like doing laundry is a job. But the great thing is if you have your laundry set up in your house 
and you're like running back there into your laundry room as you do other stuff or have another job or whatever. Exactly. Like, it's not a big deal. I mean, I said this at the beginning, but you know, my laundry situation is so much um, more scaled down than yours, which means that, you know, for me to do a changeover, the first thing I do is I go in, I strip the bed, I put it in the wash. And then by the time I'm done cleaning the room, cleaning the bathroom, you know, cleaning all of the areas that I clean, all the common spaces in the kitchen, everything like my laundry's done. And then I either use an alternative set and put it on, you know, if I'm doing other loads of laundry, I'll put that on the bed or I'll pull that thing right out of the dryer and put it in and put it back in, you know? So it's, it's such a more scaled down version of what you're doing. And so I'm wondering, so you got a dryer eventually, (laughs) (laughs) but at some point you decided to actually get a second set of a washer and dryer. Right. So, uh, so we had a front load, we have a front loader, (laughs) we have a 2003 Whirlpool duet so that thing's pretty old and it kicks ass like so this thing is like rocking so my aunt she lived in virginia and she moved to california and she gave us this washer and so i i went on craigslist and i got a dryer right it like didn't really match it's a different color but it's the same like duet set so we stacked it on top so we have the stacks right and when what we found was the bottleneck to efficiency and going faster was the dryer because like i said you can stuff stuff in the washer you're like so much stuff can go in the washer and then you're like okay now if i had two dryers i could get done in the same amount of time but i only have one dryer so i have to like wait for the dryer and i'm waiting for the dryer and i'm waiting for the dryer so someone who helps us when we're traveling she does the laundry when we're away she was like you could use a second dryer Because all I'm waiting for is the dryer. Like the washer goes fast and I can shove stuff in the washer, but I need a second dryer. Um, So I was like, I'm just going to get a second stack. Like I have the stack. And then we had an upright freezer in that room um, that was like the size of a refrigerator. And we were like, okay, let's get rid of that. Or we moved it to another building. We have another building on our property. So we moved that and I went on Craigslist and I bought an almost brand new set of Maytag, like professional Maytag washer dryer, super efficient for $300. Oh my God. Well, I was like, I don't, I don't know what's up with this deal, but this is like the deal of the century. That is a plug. I mean, I got my washer dryer. Well, this was my other unit. This isn't my unit now, but there was a, a ceramic studio that had a washer that they just, they thought they were going to use it. They thought they were going to need it for rags and things like that. They didn't end up using it. And they actually gave it to our dad who was like, I know exactly where to put this, you know? So this is such a plug for sourcing cheap, but good appliances on Craigslist or through friends and family. It's like so worth it to have appliances that work that are efficient, that like change your whole setup. The the funny thing about this deal was they, so this washer dryer is like three years old, which to me is very new. Like my other washer dryers from 2003, I'm like, how long? That's like, you know, years ago, you know, it still rocks. But like, I went to Lowe's that night and we, we had to get some other stuff at Lowe's in the same town. And I looked at the exact same washer dryer, like they still make the exact same model basically. And it was $900 each. It was $1,800. I was like, we just paid $300 for the exact same setup. And so this is the kind of thing where it's like you you price it out. You think like, you know, okay, in two or three nights of Airbnb listing, I have paid for this new washer, right. you know? And so thinking about it that way, it's like how to keep it within your budget you know, think about what the efficiency will do in terms of your time and energy. So it's, it's worth it. Yeah. And the other thing for me, since I have like basically nine bedrooms, if my washer and dryer went down, I would be so screwed, especially in the summer. I'd be like, I, I cannot do this at a laundromat. That is an impossibility like you cannot do this so i i actually wanted a second washer dryer stack as a backup 
because number one, mine's like so old, but I'm like, it, it works every time, every time I turn it on, it works. But if it went down, I would be very much in trouble. I mean, I would be like going on Craigslist to get a new one, but I'd need help installing it and getting the other one out and stuff like that. So not worth in it. In the meantime, you have the yeah, you have the second one going. Yeah. So for me, like this is a big this is a business. This is my business. So I couldn't like shut down the houses. Like that's not gonna happen. Um so yeah, so my laundry room, I, I'll probably use it as the picture for this like <laughs> Yes, I love podcast. it. I love it. It's like double stacks of like this is my my personal laundromat basically. I love it. So I have a kind of a left turn question, but it is something that I've come across in terms of whether I should do it or not. But the question is to iron or not to iron? The only time, so I'll give an answer and then you can tell me what your thoughts are. The only time I've ever ironed linens was before I took photos of the houses for Airbnb. <laughs> so that's my answer. <laughs> that's a good answer. I feel like I probably did the same thing. You know, I was just saying to you earlier that I have a set of sheets that even fresh out of the dryer, the top of the top sheet where it's got, you know, the over sew you know, the part that's supposed to be folded over and look nice at the top sheet. Um, I have a set that always comes out all like wrinkled and deformed. And that drives me insane. But then I have another set that almost never has that problem. It's like just the way that the cotton is. Um, So for me, I prefer sheets that are going to behave straight out of the dryer. That's my preference. Like, do not use jersey sheets. Those are insane and they're always like misshaped and like bizarre. Um, it's like you put it on a bed and they're all like sewn weird. But um, so I, I feel like skip the ironing, but find sheets that actually behave out of the dryer. Um, but there have been times when I've ironed the top sheet that drives me crazy just because it was driving me crazy. But I don't iron the entire sheet. I have heard of like, this is like a proper like B&B owner, like she owns a Victorian house and she's like, she cooks like full amazing breakfast and stuff. She had, she told me she had this like, this ironing machine. Oh, I've heard this, of This like those. ironing roller. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what it is, but it was just to do the pillowcases. Like, it's not for anything else. She's like, I, I run it through my such and such machine. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I don't have time for that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and again, it's like, you know, it's one of the reasons why we call our design services not perfect because not because we're interested in low quality things, but it's more like don't go crazy. Don't make yourself crazy. Can you have a high quality situation with what you have to offer? So can you find sheets that are nice, high quality and don't require ironing and aren't microfiber or whatever they're called? Micro. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so again, it's like how to not make it feel cheap, but not put yourself out so that you're finding yourself ironing sheets like that's bananas. I mean, for me, I have one guest room. So if I'm to iron a sheet here and there, it's not going to go. It's not going to uh, drive me nuts. But for you, nine plus rooms, it's that's not efficient at all. That's just crazy making. Right. That's not it, it can't happen. And I was saying this before we started was, um, you know, we have hard water uh, I, I don't, I can't always fold things right away. Like you're going to have beautiful sheets if you, if like the dryer beeps and you're standing there and you're like gonna fold. Like that's <laughs> one of my friends was like, Oh, you're not going to have wrinkles if you fold it right out of like a hot, uh, dryer. I'm like, yeah, that never happens for me. Like, like I have good a, luck. I have like a mountain pile. Like you're going to see it on the thumbnail of this podcast. Like, I have an actual mountain that's like as high as like my shelves and I have to fold it and be like, okay, Jay, it's time to fold. Like this is our job. You know? But at the same time, you know, you all make your bed so nicely. So it's like having some wrinkled sheets, but some like nice duvet covers and everything's made nicely. You know, it's not like you're just throwing that stuff on beds. So for me, you know, I wouldn't show up to an Airbnb 
who someone is running out of their own home essentially and be like, oh, the sheets are wrinkly, you know, unless it was like a poorly made bed. Right. Or things were dirty or if, you exactly. know what I mean? Uh, right. And when I say wrinkly, I don't mean like it's got crazy creases. It's just like this, like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a mild wrinkle. Like it doesn't look like it's iron, but it looks like it was washed and like put on. I don't know how to explain yeah, it. No, you know? I know what you're saying. Yeah. Exactly. It's not like, it's not a crumpled, you know, right. sheet, but it's sort of a uh, natural. Yes. That's it's a like, good It's like they're like natural yeah, sheets. Exactly. <laughs> These sheets are a hundred percent naturally out of my dryer. <laughs> yeah, right. Like there are no chemicals on these at all. <laughs> yeah. So if you out there listening have laundry tips, have things that you found to be efficient, helpful, chemical-free, you know, scent-free alternatives, um, send us uh, an email or send us an audio comment or um, comment on our YouTube channel and just let us know what you thought and what you found to be helpful for you. Thanks for listening to Shampoo and Booze at shampooandbooze.com. As usual, send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com. And we always do our best to cover the topics that you care about. Don't forget about our design and listing advice services. Head over to our services page at notperf.com and you can book design advice sessions with us. Bye. Bye.